What you guys got another PC build video here for you. This is one of two builds that I'm doing. It's the same build, but one of them's going to be a short video and one of them's going to be a more lengthy video for people that like to sit there and watch the whole video. So I'm going to try and shorten this up a bit. But these are the parts I've chose for this build. The first build for 2020. We're going to call it the white build because I've tried to keep it as white as possible. But the case is the Bit Phoenix. Uh, Nova Mesh TG. It's quite a nice case. Good airflow in here because obviously the white mesh front, which is going to allow all the airflow to blow through here. You can have three fans at the front. You can also have up to a 360 mil rad in the front, a 240 mil rad up the top as well. Tempered glass on the side. Pretty nice looking case. Around about 60 pounds, so not too bad uh, for the money. A pretty lightweight. Again, a uh, really decent case for budget builders who are looking for something that looks quite nice that doesn't break the bank. So that's the case we chose for this build. Now the motherboard we're going to be using is the ASRock B450 Steel Legend. Now this is a pretty good motherboard for the money. They do a micro ATX version and an ATX version. We've gone for the ATX version because I think it looks nicer in the case goes all the way down to the bottom. If you are buying a B450 with a Ryzen third gen processor, make sure it's a desktop 3000 ready. As you can see, this one is. That means we don't have to flash the BIOS. You've got all your manuals inside the box. You've got your IO shield inside here, that little tiny screw for your M.2. But everything you need to get up and running here is inside the box. Also got your driver CD and your manual here. You can see it inside here. No one uses these driver CDs anymore. Go faster sticker in there as well. You've got your IO shield, your SATA cable, and you've got a, a bunch of other bits and pieces inside here. So that's what we're going to be doing. Get this out the box and get the board prepped ready for installation into the case. A pretty nice looking board. I couldn't get a white motherboard uh, for the budget that I was looking or even for the AMD uh, series. So I've got this board because it has got some white accents on the board, which I think will look quite nice in this build. Also, it's got a bit of silver there and I couldn't get a white graphics card. I had to go with a silver graphics card, but everything should look nice when it's all done. I'm using this little screwdriver set, which is a magnetic screwdriver set, which is going to allow me to take the screws out of the Armour M.2 slot, uh, which means it's going to keep that drive nice and cool. So let's just unscrew this. They seem pretty tight, so just give them a little bit of a turn. There we go. Now there is an extension bar I can use for this screwdriver as well, but I'm just going to go with what we've got here. That'll do and unscrew that. Now this should have a thermal pad on the bottom of this actual holder here. So I'm going to need to remove the plastic on that to make sure uh, that we get nice cool thermals for our drive. Now this is going to be sitting right now near the CPU socket and also ran in the graphics card. So it's important to keep that drive cool. And ASRock have thought about that by adding a nice thermal pad on there. So we just need to remove that plastic bit when we're ready to install our drive here. So let's put that to one side and we can go ahead and uh, get the drive in. So I'm going to remove this a little bit later on. Put my screws down here so I don't lose them. I should be using my uh, magnetic tray, which I forgot to use. Um, but as you can see here, this is our slot. There's two of these on the board. There's one down the bottom as well with no um, armor cover on it with the thermal pad. It's a bit open. Now the drive I've chosen for this build is the Adata XPG SX8200 Pro. It's a one terabyte drive and it's an NVMe drive, which means it's a pretty fast drive. It's one terabyte, which means you can get the operating system installed on there. And it's also plenty of room for a bit of storage. Now, if you want to expand that, you can use the other M.2 slot on the board, or you can use uh, one of the uh, SATA ports for, say, for instance, an SSD or a mechanical drive or whatever floats your boat. So we're just going to slot this one in and then we're going to use the top cover to go back over the top, which is called your armor plate. We don't need to use this because obviously we've got the thermal pad on the bottom of the armor plate here. So we're going to pull off the sticker. You need to make sure you pull off the plastic here. Otherwise the thermal pad is not going to keep the chips cool. And that's what it's designed to do. And remember, this is sitting right near the graphics card and also the CPU. So it's important that you have that on there. And this is not bad for a B450 motherboard at this sort of price point. You're getting that added in. And if you drop the screw just like I did there, you can use your magnetic screwdriver to pick the screw up. That's why it's important to use 
the magnet magnetic uh, screw heads because these screws are so small and they're pretty tricky to get in so I'm going to just uh, screw this down and I don't think I've got that lined up right but it should hold it just enough until I put the other screw in I can see it's just slightly off at an angle here so let me just tighten this screw down and get this tightened up and then we should be okay there we go so get this tightened down and I just need to re-straighten that other side because it wasn't sitting on the uh, mount there so let me just tighten that down there we go it's straight now so we should be okay just make sure that's lined up there because I was missing the actual post there and it wasn't actually screwed in but it is now so it's good so let's move on to the next stage here so that should be nice and cool we're gonna move on to the next step we've got the memory and also the CPU to install so the CPU we've gone for is the Ryzen 3600 third gen processor. Now these are very affordable, but if you want to go for some of the older generations like generation two or generation one, you can still use those. They're pretty good processors, but this is what you're going to get. You're going to get your user manual, your CPU, your go faster sticker, and also your cooler. We're not going to be using this cooler. We're going to be using a custom cooler, but basically that cooler is still pretty good if you want to use it with uh, this type of build if you're on a tight budget but we're trying to get a white thing going on here so that's what we're going to be using in this build so let's get the cooler out and get that installed now I've removed the plastic bracket off the board with the screws you can see it on the left hand side there and that's because the cooler that we're going to be installing doesn't require to have that on the board so you want to keep that in a safe place so I need to remove the back plate as well which once you've removed the screws and the plastic brackets, the back plate will just slot, slot out and that's all you need to do there. So I'm going to keep that to one side and then we're going to get the uh, bracket system which comes with the cooler. So this is what the back plate is going to look like. This is the new back plate that we're going to be using. Now this has two sides to it. So there's an Intel side and an AMD side. So if you've never installed one of these before, it's quite easy to put this on and put it on the wrong way and if you haven't got it on the right side the uh, CPU cooler is not going to fit right and you may run into difficulties so that's another a common mistake that you can make by not just checking the manual or checking the back plate itself so let's get this offered up to the board because what I want to do is check the uh, screw pin layout so I know exactly where the screws will go in the holes now you can use the manual but sometimes it's not quite clear and I just want to see visually what holes that's going into and you can, should see on the back there it says Intel this side so it just shows you we're in the right side so now you need to just put in your screws and then put the clips into position to hold the screws in place it's quite a nice little mechanism to hold the screws in and it's quite easy uh, to put on I found it a quite an easy install to be honest so let's just put the screws in the right holes and get these little plastic clips that hold the screw into position that's to stop screws falling out when we got the back plate on onto the motherboard so I've got those in position I'm not gonna do the other two I'll show you the end result once we do uh, those two so there we go that's what it should look like once you've got all four in and all you need to do now is put this through the holes in the board here and if you look at the writing on the back plate it does state on there now you should see there this side for Intel on the back plate that means it's sitting in the right position if you flip it over the other side and have it in the wrong way the screws won't be sitting all the way through the holes properly and you'll have trouble mounting the cooler so be careful that you don't fall for that mistake otherwise you'll end up with problems so we just need to put those risers on now or spacers or whatever you want to call them uh, we're just going to put those on uh, just to give it a little bit of a space between the screw and also the back plate and the bracket and this just helps the bracket sit just above the socket correctly so when we tighten down it will be the per perfect pressure to get the cooler working properly you can see the little threads through there and if the back plate was the wrong way around you won't have as much thread now we need to make sure we got the the actual bracket round the right way the screws were facing down there so that's not the correct way I need to flip that round the other side and then we can there just put that through because we need something to screw down to and mount onto so now you might be wondering why I haven't put the uh, CPU in yet 
I'm not too worried about that because the retention level will still uh, pull up with the actual uh, bracket on there and I want to make sure that I've got this bracket on and I don't want to be getting any finger marks or scratches onto the actual uh, CPU at this stage but you can do it whatever way suits you it doesn't really matter I'm pretty sure it's going to trigger someone in the comments section but hey let them do it their way so we'll just get that done and uh, you can see that's risen up nicely above the socket now and now we need to put in uh, the CPU and we need to put the four screws in onto the bracket here and these are our mounting screws here so we're in the right location here so let's go ahead and uh, just pull that retention lever up and it still pulls up nicely as you can see here so I can now just get this, the actual CPU out and uh, put that into the socket and here is our CPU comes in its own little plastic clamshell just remove that and uh, we're pretty much good to go here now if you're going to be using an AMD you'll notice the pins on the CPU itself and if you're using an Intel uh, CPU you'll notice the pins will be on the board just make sure you get this in the right orientation otherwise you're going to bend those pins try not to touch the top of the CPU it's only an heat, uh, heat shield on there or heat spreader uh, but you don't really want to be touching and getting oily residue off your fingers on there and you can see that little uh, triangle in the bottom left hand corner that is for uh, the right position on the board here if you look here you can see the left hand side there's a little triangle mark there just put that in the right slot if you're looking at the logo where it says Ryzen that should be facing your IO shield and reading it from that position like so and you should be fine give it a little wiggle make sure you're in the right position and make it sitting in the socket and pull your retention lever down and you should be pretty much good from there okay so next up what we need to do here next is we're going to uh, put the compound on and also put those screws on so let's go ahead and get that done now I wanted to show you this bit there's some people that were mentioning in the comment section about spreading and also the P method um, some chips like Ryzen chips I prefer to use the spread method for Ryzen because the way the CPU dies are actually underneath the heat spreader and I prefer to use the spread method but be very careful because some compound won't allow you to use the spread method and you'll have to use the P method or use a card or something like that and I'll show you it here this uh, compound in particular uh, is quite thick it's like toffee and if you try to spread it it will start to uh, you know break up and, and roll up on the actual spreader I'll show you so this is the compound here I'm going to put a, a blob of it in the center here and then I'll spread it out and you'll see what happens so you can't always use the spread method uh, when you're using uh, certain types of compound the Arctic silver stuff seems to spread really really easy and uh, some of the other stuff which I've mentioned uh, uh, cryo, cryo nut and stuff like that is pretty thick so when using thick compound like this one you won't be able to spread it okay I'll just try and show you an example here and then I'll clean it off and do it properly but let me just quickly show you when you can't use a glove and spread in with this particular type of compound because it's quite thick and it's thick like toffee and it will dry up on the glove and dry up and start um, rolling around and you can see here it's not spreading at all it's just starting to dry out so you can't use the spread method for every single type of compound out there and you can't use the glove method uh, with spreading you're best off using a card now I've been using this compound for quite a while it's the thermal grease HY710 it's a little bit like Arctic silver and it spreads really lovely and you can use a glove or whatever you want to spread it and it does a pretty good job so use the right method with the right type of compound and you should have no problem uh, with spreading your compound okay I just wanted to bring that to your attention because someone mentioned in the comment section below uh, on a video about spreading compound and I wanted to address that in this video because I knew I had some uh, thick compound available to do the test and show you so smooth it off if you want to use this I use the uh, spread method on all Ryzen processors uh, and I use the dab method or the actual P method on Intel processors it's just the way the dies are situated so let me just put the uh, screws on on the bracket and uh, we'll get the screw down and we'll get the cooler on so I hope that uh, helps you out with the uh, thermal grease 
and uh, again there's many ways to skin a cat but you've got to do it the right way to make it right otherwise you're going to end up with problems okay and this could be said for any type of uh, uh, thing you're doing here and see that screw rolling off there that's a common thing that that happens and that's because you need one of those magnetic uh, silver trays which I showed you in previous videos which I'm not using in this video hence why the screws are rolling around and it just sort of keeps your worktop a little bit cleaner what you're working on so let me just get that uh, screwed up here there we go and I'm just going to do these in a diagonal motion and then we can offer up the cooler now again the cooler itself is a really simple uh, process to install I found this one pretty easy to install and I think this is a German company if I'm not mistaken I could be wrong let me know in the comment section below if I'm correct uh, but they seem to make some pretty good coolers okay so we got that nipped up nice and tight now you don't want to be putting the cooler on with the fans at the same time because it's going to be very difficult to tighten the screw up because you won't be able to get access to it so make sure that the cooler hasn't got the fans on you just want the actual cooler itself without the fans now this will only go on uh, the way we're going to do it here which is you can see there's a bend in the pipes and that's to allow clearance for the for the ram and also for the outer plastic uh, shroud around the um, io shield and stuff is to allow clearance there so let me just slot this on you should see little two screw holes just drop that straight on and this uh cooler does come with the uh screwdriver so it allows you to put the screwdriver in that long hole there and tighten it up so i'm just going to nip up the first one just give it a couple of little turns here don't have to go all the way down just to stop it pinging up and then you can get the long screwdriver that comes in the kit and then tighten this all the way down and you should be good to go then just uh, trying to get this lined up there we go and then tighten it up so it's nice of them to actually give you uh, the screwdriver uh, in the kit I do think that's a, a good good call and you can always use this screwdriver for other things so I'm just going to tighten this up there we go and for some reason I kept going back to the other screwdriver I don't know why but it will all tighten down the same so it doesn't really matter so now I'm just tightening these up and finishing off so alternately do these don't tighten them all the way down otherwise you're going to end up with it popping up okay there we go that's done so I've just got to tighten that one more time on the other side that's it okay so once we've got that done we can then add on the fans now you can already see it's starting to look pretty big and uh, I, I knew this was going to be a big cooler when I bought it and I wanted to test it out because I wanted to get the optimal uh, cooling performance for the 3600 okay so let's get the uh, back fan on now and uh, this could be a tight fit as you can see here it's already had to sit up on top of the IO shield plastic shroud there so it's now clipped into place and you can see that the fan is starting to uh, sit right up proud and I'm not too sure if I like that look to be honest with you uh, so I might need to uh, have a good think about this really because you can see there's quite a height difference here and I'm not sure if this will fit in with that back fan like that I need to test it and see so what I need to do here you can see if I rotated the fan around the other way it will be sitting on top of the ram slot so i won't be able to do that so next up what we're going to do here is just plug in the fans into the cpu headers on the board here and uh, cable manage these uh, cables a little bit and then i'll have a little further look at whether this is going to work for me or not if it's not then i'll just replace the heatsink i knew it would be really tight so i just wanted to give it a trial to see you can see here now i've got the cable management done here it's about the best i can do really uh, so i'm leaving those as is and of course we need to get the ram in so this is the ram we use the t-force rgb ram this is 3600 speed really nice um, looking ram this is nighthawk it's called and i do like the quality of it it's a really good quality ram actually and i do like the way uh, the ram looks on the board as well so it's going to look nice on this build so I took a bit of a wild punt on this uh, sort of uh, RAM because I've never used this company before and uh, to be honest I'm pretty impressed and uh, we'll get this up 
and uh, when we do some benchmarking and some testing uh, you'll let, I'll let you know what it's all about and what it's like so that's the sort of RAM we got in there now so now I'm going to replace all the fans now it does have two fans in the kit which there's nothing wrong with the bit Phoenix fans but I wanted to use these Asian horse white fans here and these are a new fan on the market so thanks for Asian horse for sending these over uh, for the build so I'm just going to remove these fans and get these installed and this should add a nicer look to the whole uh, build because obviously we've got white fans now so I'm trying to get everything as white as possible and I'm missing one fan and uh, Asian horse said they will send out another pack of three which was really nice of them so big thanks to them for sending out and contributing to the uh, build here so what we're going to do now is I've put the cooler inside here you can see I've had to remove the back fan because it won't fit and of course uh, I've had to remove the top fans but I better not be able to get those back in but I'll show you what it looks like with the fans in and I think I've decided already that I'm going to swap this out it's just too big and I prefer it to have a bit more room up here you can see how tight that is so I've removed it and uh, we'll replace that cooler with a smaller one and uh, we're going to put the power supply in now this just has full screws just got to plug this in now of course you won't see these uh, braided ketchup and mustard cables they're not the greatest in the world but it's not an expensive power supply but we're using extensions on here um, so easy DIY uh, fab hooked me up with some uh, white cables so we're going to be using those with this particular power supply so let's get that all screwed in and we can move on to the next step here so I'm just going to screw these up and with all power supplies it's just four screws it's nothing too difficult and uh, of course if you've got the money to splurge on a, a fully modular power supply then you can do but of course this was a sort of budget trying to keep this in a certain budget it was very difficult to try and fit everything in so I'm just going to plug in the 24 pin into the actual board now I've put the extensions on and of course these just will clip onto the 24 pin and you should see them here now I've got some combs here some RGB combs which I can use which I'll use those a little bit later on but that's what that's going to look like I'll tidy this up a little bit later we've got the front cables the audio cable here and also the USB 3.0 this is coming from the case so we need to put all these into the board itself so I'll quickly do that right now very simple stuff it's a shame these are black but that's the best I can do I'll just plug that in and I'll probably be able to hide it behind the back of the 24 pin here so let me just get that plugged in there now again this is pretty straightforward stuff if you've never built a PC it's really easy nowadays to build these PCs and I think that motherboard looks absolutely awesome inside that case with that white and silver and black I do like the look of it and I think the silver I can get away with it in this build I was hoping to get a white board but I just couldn't find one so I've got the uh, Asian horse power hub here for the fans so I'm just gonna put this onto the case comes with its own sticky pad here and plug all the fans into this and this should give the case a really nice look now you've got RGB colors you've got a load of them uh, different cycles on here like rainbow and strobe and all these sort of different ones I'm just gonna have them static I like them static and I'm just gonna make them white uh, if I can get white on these so we'll get that set up a little bit later just need to find a spot for this and I think I'm just gonna put it right here and I've plugged in all of the cables and you can see what's happening nowadays with RGB it's causing so much more cable management and uh, you can see the amount of cables here there's a load of them and there's a load on the bench too which I need to take care of which I'll do in a second uh, but you need to uh, keep your cable management under control so I'm just doing the power switch and also the hard hard drive LED and also the uh, reset switch there and a bunch of other stuff I'm just going to plug these in you won't be able to see much here so I'm just going to plug these in and they'll be done and I must admit I am liking that still legend as rock motherboard it looks really sweet in there I do like it kudos to as rock so let's uh, plug all those in 
and we've got the uh, fan headers in as well we've got the RGB cable plugged in I've got everything plugged in here now so we're pretty much ready to rock and roll uh, with the rest of it so let's get the next stage done okay so let's tidy these cables up a bit here you can see here there's a big massive amount of cables and we're not going to be using these and this would be the ideal opportunity to use a fully modular power supply means you don't have to have these plugged in but I've just um, basically used these ties here and what I do is I put them in a nice little bundle and then I tuck them in down near the power supply now there's no ventilation problems down there the power supply doesn't have holes where it needs to breathe I can just tidy this up into a nice tight ball and tuck them inside here that's the way I do mine you could do the way yours the way you want to do them but that's the way I do them and they tuck in there nice and tidy and it clears a lot of that bulk of cables so you can get away with using those cheaper type of uh, power supplies okay so the next day I've got the cooler delivered which is the deep cool game max 400 white this is a silent 120 millimeter uh, PWM fan with a white LED that's the only other white one that I could go for and of course there was uh, the closed loop water cooled system from Corsair which had the white version which was about 130 odd pounds this was 30 pounds so it was a no-brainer really I'm trying to keep the cost down I've got the bracket on there now just gonna screw this down and once we've got that all screwed down this is held on by four screws it's a really simple mechanism I do need to put the bracket back onto the board again that plastic bracket and with the back plate I need to put that back on because this needs that to clip onto which is not a big problem because I've already got that uh, to one side so let me go ahead and sort that out and then we can add it on so I've got the bracket on there now as you can see I'm just going to put the final screw in there now and uh, we should be good to go from there and then tighten that down and to be honest I've run into a couple of little snags on this uh, build but that sometimes is the way it is uh, with some builds you have to adapt during the build so I'm just going to remove the sticky pad on the bottom of the cooler and uh, that's now removed and I need to put some thermal paste on so I'm just going to put some thermal paste on there there we go and now we can put the clip cooler down and clip it on it's using one of these clip methods which are super easy to put on. I've had to remove the fan on the top of the case and the fans on the cooler because obviously I won't be able to uh, put it on there. So now I need to try and get this back in there and it's gonna be a bit of a squeeze, but I might be able to jam it in there somehow. There's not much room. I'll just be careful that I'm not gonna break that off the CPU. That'll be a nightmare if that happened. That's in there. There we go. The things we have to do so this is quite a tight case to be honest so it's a really tight case uh, to get things working right so we've got that on there now I can screw this all down and get the fan on gonna get the fan on here it uses the same wire clips uh, to hold that on now I can also I put another fan on here if I wanted to but one's gonna be enough for this build I think that looks a lot more in proportion it looks a lot better for me and I think it just is it just gives me a bit more space up the top there just need to plug this in here into the header on the board and it's all starting to come together now so I'll just do those final little bits and get the graphics card in there you can see I've got the graphics card now slotted in and I'm a bit gutted that I couldn't get the white graphics card but I'm not like these big channels I have to buy a lot of this stuff myself and of course there wasn't any white graphics cards that are available in this sort of price range for me so I had to go and buy this all myself uh, so it's very difficult when you're a channel of my size trying to build PCs for you guys obviously I have to then get rid of this PC because I have no use for them so it's very very difficult uh, when it's coming out of your own pocket but I'm just gonna screw this down and uh, hopefully once we get this screwed down I don't think that graphics card looks too bad being silver in there it sort of matches with the motherboard but it would have been nicer if I could have had a, a white GPU in there it would have looked a lot better in my personal opinion so if there's any graphics card manufacturer companies out there that want to send me a nice white graphics card then please do <laughs> we can all wish and hope but hey you got the cables in now and uh, we're just gonna put the cable combs in 
in there and they are RGB ones. I'm not going to show you the whole process because they are pretty uh, time consuming. So I'm just going to get those done and uh, button this up and finish off the video. This is the shorter version of the video. If you want to see the full length version, I'll upload that. Let me know in the comments section. So I've got this cable sort of semi tidy really. I can tidy up a little bit more at a later date but it looks good enough for what I need here and uh, basically get the side panel on and we should be good to go and there we go there's the finish article doesn't look too bad I've got those uh, cable combs on there as well just need to pull off the plastic here and uh, once we get that off you'll be able to see it. it looks pretty nice I think it turned out pretty well that cooler does look a lot better in there uh, with the smaller size to it the other one was way too big I can see a bit of the board now and it brings it all out and it does look a lot more better and finished and this is basically with the light off in the room you get that nice bluey white look it's like a snow white I do like it um, and I've managed to get the uh, fan sorted out in the front it's all looking rather nice and I think the builds turned out pretty well I'll leave the links for all of this stuff in the video description that RAM looks absolutely awesome it really does I, I'm really pleased with that and this is with the light on in the room looks really fresh and clean I was going to put an actual uh, stormtrooper from Star Wars in there to make it look even nicer and I may even do that and uh, sort of uh, hot glue it in onto the case might look a little bit uh, nice and it'll make it a selling point I suppose because I need to get rid of this and I need to spec it up and find out how much it is so I can build another PC for you guys. So that's the way it works on this channel, I'm afraid. Other than that, I think that turned out pretty well. I hope you enjoyed the build. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Happy New Year, and I shall see you again for another video real soon. Now, if you haven't subscribed yet, hit the red subscribe button and then hit the bell notification button and click all to be notified when we upload new videos. Thank you.